Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing a story time video, also with kinetic sand. So I'll be playing with the kinetic sand while I tell the story. The story is going to be the time I actually broke my collarbone from falling down the stairs and I also needed to use surgery on it. Okay, so let's start. So it's just been Christmas fun day in year three. And basically, I was wearing, because it was a um, wear, you, wear what you want day, I had these silky tights on. And we just got new carpet on our stairs. So the stairs were really smooth. And I was wearing these super silky tights. So I was walking down the stairs holding an iPad, watching YouTube as I was going down. And because of the soft, because of the new soft carpet, the slippy carpet, and my tights, I slipped. But we also had our Christmas tree up at the time, and it had um, this glitter on it, which was supposed to act as like snow. So I fell down the stairs straight into the Christmas tree, and as I landed, I like hit the the bottom of it and that made the tree shake and I glitter all over me like it was in my hair it was in my eyes it was on my face I was covered in it so of course as I had just fallen down the stairs I started screaming and my mum who was in the conservatory putting out just um sorting out the washing heard me screaming and she she had already heard me fall down the stairs so she ran in and she was like are you okay are you okay are you okay and she was panicking and i was like so she got me out from under the christmas tree and put me on the sofa so i started this was my instant reaction i want to go to sleep i started really saying i wanted to go to sleep for some reason so she was like, I think you've broken something because my arm was all, like, twisted. So she rang my dad, and my dad was like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. So he came home. I got in the car, and they drove me to the hospital, obviously. So we got to the hospital, and my dad took me in, and they gave me an x-ray and said, yeah, so, right, she's broken her collarbone. And we were like, oh, great. So they put this, they put, they gave me a sling instead of like, actually, no, it would have been a sling, I think. So yeah, they gave me a sling and I went home and it turns out while I'd been gone, my mum had gone up to um, like a, sh a furniture shop and bought these, this big teddy bear blanket, giant V pillow and this giant normal pillow. <laughs> normal pillow. And then... So, I had to sleep on the sofa for ages, and I couldn't lie on that arm, on this arm, because obviously it was broken the, sh the collarbone on it. So, I was sleeping on the sofa for ages. I couldn't go back to school for, like, three months, which was a bit of a nightmare. But, um, at this point, actually, we weren't already... Everything at school was a bit unstable, because my normal teacher had gone off on maternity leave and they were really low on teachers at that time so I already had like a different teacher every single day and it was all just like sort of we weren't actually doing any lessons it was all just sort of like put on a movie and do some colouring so we weren't too worried about the school thing but yeah so that happened and then um so I was there for while and then on Christmas Eve we I had to go uh, to a doctor's appointment to see if I was going to need surgery or not so I went there and they were like so I had this doctor and she said probably most likely not okay I doubt you will but you'll but you'll get a phone call tonight so we leave there we're thinking okay cool we should be all right then so then my mum gets a phone call, obviously from the hospital, and she was like, oh, okay, cool, right. This will be them saying, no, oh, she's fine. And then it was, and then they said, um, hi, yeah, so it turns out that doctor actually didn't look at it properly, 
and this was my actual doctor, the person who I'd been having this whole time, like for the past few weeks, and he was like, yeah, no, it's really messed up. It was like, your collarbone's supposed to be like that, and mine was like that. So it had gone completely out of shape. So they were like, okay, yeah, so what they what they were going to need to do is they were going to need to put, like, a metal rod in my shoulder. So when it was fixing, it was going to go on the top, so it, like, it bent back into place. So they started, so I was, like, panicking because it was Christmas Eve and they said they were going to do it on Boxing Day. And I literally was, like, had the worst Christmas Day ever. I was crying the whole day. I did not want to have this surgery. So next day he came and um we went to the hospital and I got so I had the surgery and I was fine. But that's when my nervous twitch started. Or actually the multiples. So what I used to do is was I would like I'd be watching TV and my eyes would just go super wide and then they go normal again. So we literally, so that started, and that was really weird because the parents thought she's never had a twitch before, and they were like, it's probably because she's so stressed out with everything that's going on. So I still couldn't go back to school because it was still December. I couldn't go back until, like, February. So they were like, okay. So we started saying, right, when you feel the need to do that, just shut your eyes until it goes away so we did that and it stopped eventually but then I started doing this like rabbit thing I started going like this like that and at this point that had started in like late January I was gonna go back to school soon I still had the metal rod in so I went back to school and of course pretty much everyone in my class was like oh, are you okay what happened oh my god where have you been why is your arm in a sling? Are you okay? Everyone was just like totally crazy. So then I, so obviously I couldn't go the, the way. So the way it worked at our school, or at my old school, was at lunchtime there was no like separate ground or playground or field if you wanted to play like a ball game. Everything was just on one playground. So of course, I couldn't go outside at break or lunchtime in the risk of me being whacked by a football or something and the damage being even worse. So they wouldn't, so I couldn't go outside anymore. So I would do, I would pick someone to go with me, but every break or lunch we would go to somewhere called The Nest. And there we would just, like, we'd do colouring, we'd play on the iPads and things like that. So. One day, because what we would do is we would go from, obviously I wasn't allowed to eat outside, we'd go from the lunch hall down the corridor straight to the nest. So we were doing that. I was with I was with a girl, let's change her name, let's call her Megan. So I was with a girl called Megan. So me and Megan were walking, were walking down the, we literally just left the hall and stood there was the head teacher. She's actually leaving now, but let's call her Miss let's call her Miss Miss Fish. So Miss Fish is stood there, like talking to another teacher. I don't know, I can't remember who it was. And she turns around and looks at me and Megan and says, What are you doing? So we're like, Oh, I've broken my collarbone, so I need to go down to the nest. She said, You can do that, but you have to go through the playground. I'm sorry, you can't come through the hallway. She was like, that's ridiculous. So she was literally like 40, she pushed us out into the hall and then she just stood there by the door watching us. So we had to go out and it was basically me walking along like the wall and sort of Megan stood there like a shield trying to block me. So eventually we got into the nest and we told the teacher in there what happened and she was like, okay, that's ridiculous, I'll go talk to her. So, next, so, um, about a week passes, and I'm with Megan again. We were, we were going, again, back down to the nest, because I wasn't allowed out. So, we did that. We were just walking out, like, you know, like we always did. And then, 
Miss Fish is there again. And she's like, what did I tell you? You're not allowed to come this way. And we were like, but I've broken my collarbone. I have to come this way. She was like, no, 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 no. You've got to go that way. So the teacher from the nest hears what's happening and comes out like, no, seriously, she could get really hurt and then we could be in a lot of trouble as a school. So she was like, oh, start getting grumpy. And she was like, fine. But if you if you start messing around in here or anything, then then you won't be allowed in the nest at all. You have to sit in your classroom. And like, why would we be messing around anyway? That could just make me even more injured. She would get all like, and then whenever I saw her, she would just look at me as we walked down the hall. So then, um, then one so. We were, I was just carrying on at school like I always did. Uh, we still didn't have a proper teacher. We were still, still had randoms. So that was a bit annoying. I just made this fish. I don't, I don't want to break it. Look at the fish. Oh, it fell. So we still had, didn't have a proper teacher. So but pretty much every single day was like, go in, sit down. Actually, I need to tell you something else that happened. So, Ev, we have we had another girl in our class. Let's change her name. Let's call her Ruby, who had lost. She had to get her leg amputated, and her arm was like permanently broken. So, we were um, every single. So she was in a wheelchair. So every single morning, um, another a different teacher would call her. Miss 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 White. So every single morning, Miss White would come down, and I would be sat. Everyone else had to sit on the floor, but obviously I couldn't really sit on the floor, so I would have to sit at a table in the morning. And every single morning, Miss White would be pushing um, Ruby out of her classroom down to the office because she needed to have some like medication in the morning. So she would look at me and go. Well, you're gonna move the table then. So she would make me like shove this table. Of course, that's not good on my collarbone. I would have to shove this table out of the way every single morning. And eventually, other kids would like in the morning. I would sit down. They would hang on and they'd push the table for me just before she arrived. So once, um, so then time then came for the time I had to get the surgery to get the metal rod removed because it wasn't going to stay in forever because it could be removed so they when they checked it um it, it's still not been like when they so actually no, hang on, let me restart that so my surgery was booked for like a week before easter why has it always got to happen around such happy days? So it was right before, like, a week before Easter. So they were saying to all the kids who were there, like, okay, you get to, you know, do you want which Easter egg do you want? And we didn't, there wasn't, like, a thing there where you could see, but they would say, like, which Easter egg do you want? What kind of chocolate? And back then and still today, white chocolate is my favourite. So I was like, can I please have a white chocolate egg? And they were like, yeah, okay then. And they like searched everywhere. That they, they went around the world to try and get me this white chocolate Easter egg. And eventually they found one. They got a white chocolate Easter egg for me. So I got this Easter egg and I was eating that. So then the person came by to say like, okay, so this is what the metal rod's done. And even after like, five months of it healing it's still like it was like that and it's it's like that now it's still not perfect so i had to be off school for about another like two three weeks so i was off school for that long and then um i went back and had so i went back and i was i was okay then but still like that teacher Miss Miss Fish still hates me. I should have made another story that, that is about my collarbone. So I was still going to the nest and that, and 
oh, we had a school disco, and I didn't, I wanted to wear um, this dress, I wanted to wear this really nice dress that I just got, and basically, my um, my mum was like, okay, fine, I'll let you take off your sling so you can wear that dress, so I was like, cool. So I wear the dress without my sling on, everything's fine, there's no injuries, everyone's super cautious of me because the whole school knew. And then, um, so then the next day comes and break time comes and I'm getting up with my, with another kid, let's call them, so boy, it was, let's just call them Jamie. So me and Jamie were getting ready to go down to the nest again so then my teacher the um or the substitute person we had we'll call her miss mrs 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 wall so mrs wall was like oh i saw you at the disco last night sophie you weren't wearing your sling i was like no, and she's like, well, if you weren't wearing your sling, then I think you're well enough to go out onto the playground. There's a difference between sitting at a table with your friends with loud music on and going out to a playground where you could get hit with a ball. So I am like, what? The teacher next door, Miss Mr. Robin, Mr. Robertson, comes in and he's like, that was his, that was a fake name by the way, and he's like. Hang on, because he'd been teaching full time year three. He was like, Well, no, because he, you know, he was like, um, No, she can't go out. And she was like, Yeah, but, you know, she wasn't wearing a, her sling last night. She was like, Yay, yeah, but there's a. And then he said the same difference. And it was like, it was really stupid. So she was like, Oh, well, I think she could at least try. And he was like, Well, he was like, Yeah, but. I might have to just check with her parents that it's okay if um, for her to stop to stop, you know, going in to stop going in the nest all the time. And he's like, I've already spoken to her parents. That is true. They said until she's back at school without her sling on and she's completely fine, then she can start going back outside. Oh well, hmm, I don't know. So they're like, she's like, oh fine. And then the next day she's like, okay, well, um, me and me and Mr. Robertson have made a decision and we've decided that you can start going out back outside. So I was literally pushed outside by by this teacher and I was like, what? So of course I went home and I told my mum and my mum was like fuming. She was like, what? She was really mad. So she went into the school and she was like, I need to speak to Mrs. Um, Mrs. What did I call her again? Oh, I need to speak to Mrs. Wall. So she was like, Mrs. Wall was mine. She was like, well, you know, Sophie has actually been going outside um, a lot lately. And she's, she's been saying to her friends in class, she really misses going outside. And I look at my mum, just give her the look of, she's totally lying. She's like, well, if my daughter says that, she doesn't want to go outside, then you don't then you don't need to send her outside. And she's like, Oh well, I was just um you see, well the uh, well actually the um the nest just so happened to be closed that day. She was like, but it doesn't close. She she my mum knew that it didn't close. So she was really mad and basically she rang the head teacher and the head teacher was was like, oh, yeah, well, Sophie's been messing around in the halls. And she was like, okay, that's it. So she was really mad. So basically she started to write a note every day that said my daughter can do this and that. So, yeah, that's what that's what ended up happening. Um, that is my story of the time I broke my collarbone. And uh, this is what I've been making in this time. Here I've got, here, I'll show you what I made. Okay, so we'll start with the blue. Here I've made a little turtle out of the blue kinetic sand on a little castle. Now I'll show the pink. I made a little fish with the pink. These are obviously using moulds. 
that is our pink fish and finally we we'll use the purple and I don't want to break it oh no 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 no, no it's gonna break <laughs> hang on guys oh got it oh no the head's breaking okay just ignore the big crack near the head and the purple I made a seahorse and all these castles are on little hills now okay guys oops oh no well that's that's the end of the seahorse okay guys well I hope you enjoyed oh, I hope you enjoyed my story and my kinetic sand bye